Notice that um, aspartic acid is the same as glutamic acid, except glutamic acid just has one more carbon. Here we have a carbon in the carboxy group, but glutamic acid has two carbons in the carboxy group. And there's the same relationship between glutamine and uh, asparagine. And we didn't look at ASP going to ASP, but is that done by, TA, by total acid hydrolysis or no? Uh, well, yeah. If you have aspartic acid that is part of a peptide, if you do total acid hydrolysis, it'll still look like aspartic acid. Okay. I'll, I'll have to right. prove it to myself. I haven't done it yet. Okay. Oh, well. Generally speaking, most functional groups still look like the same thing after the total acid hydrolysis. All the total acid hydrolysis is really supposed to do, remember, is break these peptide bonds. Right. It's just supposed to break the peptide bonds, so normally it's not going to change the identity. Normally it's right. not going to there change is. the identity. The only reason it changes these identities is because these are the two things that have peptide bonds on their side chains. Asparagine and glutamine are the two things that have peptide bonds on their side chains. So those are the two side chains that get messed up when you do a hydrolysis. Does that make sense or not? If it doesn't make sense, we can just do more examples. Okay. Well, then what's the upshot? Let's say you do a total acid hydrolysis on a tripeptide. And the computer tells you that the products are glycine, lysine, and serine. Well then, what were the amino, what were the amino acids in the original tripeptide? What were the amino acids in the original tripeptide? Well, the answer is they were glycine. Lysine and serine, although we don't know what order they were in yet. Why'd you write a two? I'm sorry, it's supposed to be a question mark. Oh. What we're trying to do is we're trying to figure out what were the amino acids that made up the original tripeptide. Well, here the total acid hydrolysis gave us glycine, lysine, and serine, so we know the original tripeptide had glycine, lysine, and serine. total acid hydrolysis and we get these three amino acids. So what do we know about the original components of the original tripeptide? So we know it'll have glycine, glycine. Does it matter if we know the order or not? The order matters, but we don't know that yet. That would be something we'll have to learn how to figure out later. Okay. So all we know so far is how to figure out the components of the peptides. We haven't learned any tricks yet for figuring out the order, one thing at a time. So, all thing, all, so eventually you will have to know both the components and the order. But all we're learn, trying to learn right now is what the components are. So we know that originally there was a glycine and there was a lysine. And what do we know about the third peptide? It could be aspartic acid. It could have been either aspartic acid or asparagine. Okay, sorry. So these problems are big detective stories where you, um, you keep writing down what do you know. And so it's very important every time you figure something out to write down what you know about the original peptide. So what we would write down now is we know that it was composed of this, this, and this, or this. It's important that if you don't know what something is, you write down what you do know. So I wouldn't want to write down nothing about this. I would want to write down that I know it's either aspartic acid or asparagine, because either of those would hydrolyze into aspartic acid. And most people get this wrong. Most people just automatically assume that if, you, if the hydrolysis gives you aspartic acid, you must have started with aspartic acid. But now we've seen that's not right. You could have started with asparagine, and that would also have given you the aspartic acid in the hydrolysis. So now we'd have to use some other method to figure out which of these is right. OK? OK. Now, um, what is another method that we can use to figure out which of these is right? Is there any way that we can detect from the total acid hydrolysis whether we started with the aspartic acid or with the asparagine? Well, if we start with the uh, say, let's say we started here, well, let's say that we ended up with glutamic acid here. Then this could have been glutamine, glutamic acid, or glutamine. If we end up with GLU, that could have come from GLU or GLN. Both glutamic acid and glutamine hydrolyzed to glutamic acid. Now I showed that over here. We showed that if you start with glutamine, you would hydrolyze this, 
and you would get something that looks like glutamic acid. But you would also get ammonium. So that's the clue. That's the clue that we actually did hydrolyze glutamine. Because not only do we get the glutamic acid, we get the ammonium as well. So this is our clue that we can use to figure out whether we were actually starting with glutamine or we were starting with glutamic acid. It would have to say plus ammonium. That's right. So when you're doing these problems, they will tell you all the products of the total acid hydrolysis. They will tell you all the products of the total acid hydrolysis. So if there's any ammonium, you'll see it. So it must have been GLN. That's right. In this simple example, we must have started with GLN. If That's right. one of the products was ammonium. Yeah. Well, yeah. So if, so, um, so yeah, let's do it this way. So let's say that the total acid hydrolysis actually gave you this. Then you know it's, it's uh, GLN. Then it looks like this was the starting material. On the other hand, suppose that the total acid hydrolysis gives us glutamic acid and no ammonium. Then we know it's GLA. Then we know that what was this third amino acid here? What other one? GLU. The GLU itself, the glutamic acid. So the ammonium here is a kind of marker. Cool. Is there a marker for the uh, ASN or AFP? Well, let's see. And if it's glue, then it's glue. So we're good. I'm sorry. If it's <laughs> glin. This is glutamic acid. And GLN is glutamine. Right. Okay. Sorry, my point was if it was just GLN, then it's GLN. Okay, no issues there. So the problem is just if we get glue at the end. So the issue is if we get glue at the end, because if we get GLN at the end, it doesn't matter. Now, can you see that you will never get GLN after the total acid hydrolysis? That was the whole point. What? Total acid hydrolysis can never G give you GLN. Why? Because you you always form. That's oh, the whole right. point. Wait, no, but that's what I asked before, because we were talking about the, the substrates mm -hmm. changing. Mm -hmm. and Wait, second. that's one of the exceptions? No, so it looks like we haven't understood the main idea here. So let's say you have glutamine here. Here's glutamine. Now what's going to happen to this if you do total acid hydrolysis? If you do total acid hydrolysis, you're going to break this bond. Maybe I didn't understand what you guys were saying. And when you break this bond, this won't be glutamine anymore. It'll be glutamic acid. Therefore, after total acid hydrolysis, you can never end up with GLN. So the NH4 thing isn't really a marker. It's kind of erroneous. Uh, no, I guess I still haven't explained this right, so let's go through it again until it makes sense. So these are the key ideas that we've been saying. If the peptide has a glutamic acid and you do total acid hydrolysis, you will simply get glutamic acid as one of your products. If the peptide has a glutamine in it and you do total acid hydrolysis, what do you get? Well, we work that out over here. If you start with glutamine, GLN, and you do total acid hydrolysis, the glutamine turns into glutamic acid, but there's also an ammonium leaving group. And that's the telltale sign that you originally had glutamine. Even though now the thing the computer sees is the glutamic acid. Great. So the important thing is, could our original starting material have had a glutamine in it? Yes. Can the original starting material have a glutamic acid in it? Yes. But can the product of total acid hydrolysis have a glutamine in it? Never. The product of total acid hydrolysis can never have a glutamine because hy hydrolysis hydrolyzes glutamine to look like glutamic acid. Now, everything we just said is also true for aspartic acid and asparagine because they're the same exact things, they just have one fewer carbon chain. Okay. If you take a look at the pictures in your table, aspartic acid is exactly the same as glutamic acid, it just has one less carbon in the carbon chain. Okay, and again, we're going to be using NH4 plus as a marker. That's right. So, asparagine will never be a product. That's right. It'll always look like aspartic acid after the total acid really hydrolysis. Aspartic acid and ammonium, and that right. means we started with asparagine. That's right. Okay. 
If we don't have ammonium, then we must have started with asparagine. Right. Wait. Then you must, must have started with the aspartic acid. Aspartic acid. So here's the four possibilities. So going backwards, if you have ASP, no NH4, then you know it was ASP to start with. You can see that from this line. That's right. 